and it's been wonderful watching this colony develop over the last few months. This is the first time it did fly in to wet itself when I heard it plop into the water now, and they typically do it about four or five times. So I'm hoping this will give them an opportunity to follow it as it bombs down into the water. But it could well have had a few baths before we got here, and therefore will no longer require to go in. But they usually, like I said, dunk themselves about four or five times for an average bathing or bathing session that we've noticed. Come on, plop in one more time for us. Concern due to the amount of time it has spent preening now. I fear that it will not plop back into the water. We'll give it a moment just to make sure. Oh, now what's interesting, the bird has just landed in the nest to the left of, or the, the furthest left nest, is a spectacled weaver. And you probably won't be able to see its spectacles from here, but they do kind of have a Zorro mask over their eyes, and you can notice a very differently shaped nest to the village weavers that we've been seeing here. So that long nest is indicative of a spectacled weaver. So they've joined in and the weaver festivities here, but a slightly different, slightly different weaver. Make do with this spot, even though its beaks a little bit out of the shot. But you can see that beautiful spotted breast of the ground scraper thrush. It's a bird we haven't seen very much of, but this family, there appear to be four of them, I think two adults with two chicks, have started showing themselves in the last few days, so really been enjoying being able to show you a new bird that we haven't spent too much time with. Apologies for disturbing your morning mud wallow. To it because I don't, want to, I don't want them to leave on our accord in the last few months in terms of the drive and frustrations, but that's how it goes. There's highs and lows out here, and this morning is a low point. So if you are joining for the first time, it's important for you to understand that.
it sounds like a champagne cork popping. spot for us to be trying to capture the calling. As you can see, it disappeared behind the bush. So you keep watching closely and in between its feeding. I'm hoping it'll let off one more call for us. distance comical little call for people that put their bed on bricks to make sure the top of can't get to them so there have been a few speculated sightings of the mysterious tokolosh on our way back there's also been the honey civet now the honey civet is a combination between a honey badger and a civet and one night when I think it was Jason, Alex, and Mark were on their way home. Mark's convinced it was a civet, and Jason and Alex are convinced it was the honey badger, and therefore the honey civet came about. Mutual consensus. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful kitty balls. They seem to be taking some time off in the shade, just relaxing. And I'm looking forward to joining them shortly. Not yet, elsewhere, but the same plans are in mind. Yes, there has been a change of fortune. And it couldn't have come at a better time or with a better animal. So, the carmine bee eater that we've been speaking about for the last few days is here. Yeah. And it really is incredibly beautiful. Got it, Vivian? beautiful bird as I've said and as you can see now of the carmine beads and as it repositions it we'll notice different colors amongst it there is another one that you can try and get before it disappears if you're interested there's a battalia so soaring over it's a female well done that's beautiful and I can tell that it's a female because its wings are predominant oh look at that oh beautiful And it is common for the Batsalia to teeter like that from side to side. It's got a very short tail. And without uh, a long tail, with a short tail, it's difficult, more difficult for it to balance itself if it does hit any turbulence. Back to the beads, though. And I'm so glad we have got to see this bird because... We've been speaking about it for a long time and even came here looking for it yesterday on the starts of drive. And there was no sign of them. But there's a pair that appear to have made the quarantine clearings their own over the last few days. And these are them. And this is one of them. You can see its beaks open. And that is because it's very hot. Or well, starting to get very hot. And... That is how the 
birds will keep cool. They don't sweat like we can. Therefore, they need to pant and open their beak in order to keep cool. Stay here. Maybe the carmine bee eater will come back and present another opportunity for us to see it. But if not, we can just enjoy this beautiful view of these kudu bulls. disappeared but there is still another one. Ah, I'm still still staying up. Well I'm glad we got to see it running off there. Flying off. There. Doesn't go. themselves often on dead branches and then wait to see an insect and then fly off and hawk it. So let's keep watching. It did one earlier where as we were coming into position, I'm not sure if you saw it, where it flew off just a few centimeters and then landed back on the perch and it would be wonderful if it did that again because Vian would certainly be able to keep track of it. But it won't be long before it takes off and finds another insect that it wants to gobble up. So let's give it a moment or two. It's a pity it's not facing us because the prettier colors are on its breast. There are just so many insects flying around. It, oh, hold on, Vian. <laughs> Beautiful. So we're challenging VM here in the last few minutes and there's not much longer to go before we're done with this morning's drive and so happy that we're finishing on a high note with this carmine bee. So it's a beautiful, beautiful bird and it is making me feel a whole lot better about this morning's drive because at stages I was wishing I wasn't here, which is not how it should be. But like I said, it was one of the trickier drives for me and more frustrating drives and that is the reality out here. Look at that long tail streamer, also a wonderful thing on the carmine bee eater, that the other bee eaters we get you don't have that long tail streamer. One little aerial display for us before we go. If not, thanks for joining in and I apologize for this morning's drive it wasn't the best but it is how it goes it is how it is what it is and i'm hoping this afternoon things will pick up and increase there certainly are good prospects with the leopard that leopard tracks that have been seen this morning um so with a little bit of luck things will increase in terms of content and action Until then, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day or morning, depending on where it is you are in the world. And from myself and VM and Alex, we look forward to this afternoon's drive. And thanks for joining us this morning.